All right, let's take a look at what we did last time. If I press play here, you can see we have a character. And as I walk around, walk back this way, you can see that we have a little cube that will follow us around. And if we go too far away or too fast, it returns to the waypoints. So we could probably see a better example if we look up here. And as I move around, you can see it's following me. If I uh, get too far away, here, let's do this a little bit closer. You can see it went to that waypoint. Let's see if I could lead this this enemy here. Actually, let's grab our NPC and uh, make its movement speed maybe 10. And then there we go. So it's moving pretty quick. Let's see if I walk close to it. Just want to show you that uh, we c it'll actually go to the closest waypoint. And now it's following me. It's going a little bit too quick. And I'm going to try to get away from it from that waypoint. So that it returns uh, maybe let's make this six there you go now i should be able to get away from it and now it's returning to that nearest waypoint so that's what we did last time what i'd like to do um, first let's do a little bit of cleanup so i'm going to right click on this week one and go to game object create empty and i'll just name this like building and all of these rrs um, which just going to drop them in here and then close this so it gives us a little bit more space and looks cleaner same thing we could uh, create a empty object and call it waypoints and then just grab all of these waypoints for this zone and just place them underneath here just cleaning up our area uh, something else i'd like to do is um, let's uh, create a ui with a health bar slider so i'm going to right click i'm going to ui and i'm going to add a slider here and um you can see there's a little notch and let's see it's all the way down in this corner so uh, let's um, let's see I'm gonna hit F in this scene to focus you could see that it's here and let's just place this uh, I believe if we hold alt we can snap it to the right corner and then let's just move it down and then over a little bit now I'm gonna hit R to scale it up so something like this and uh, let's create a new script. So now we have our health bar and this will be essentially attached to our player. Um, and so let's go ahead and inside the uh, NPC folder, we're gonna create another folder and we're gonna call this HUD for heads up display. And this is like anything that's a HUD. And inside of here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create another C sharp script and I'm gonna name this NPC damage. And this is just going to be, as our NPC gets closer, it's going to damage our player with negative energy. So let's double click this script and open it in Visual Studio. All right, let's begin by adding a couple of variables at the top. Now this, um, we need to actually add a library. That's why we're getting an error here. If I right click on this, it says quick actions and refactoring, it says, using unity engine.ui it'll automatically create it for us but this first one is just the damage amount which i want to say is 10 and then damage radius is 2 this is how far we can get to the player before it inflicts the 10 amount of damage a transform to our player and then a slider to a health bar now we could tie this into our waypoint script but as we start to learn a little bit more coding and the right way to do things you want to start breaking your logic out into individual classes or scripts. So right now we're permitting a little bit of bad programming as we learn to code, but as we get further along, you're going to um, not just learn syntax or how Unity works, but the right way to code things. So this is going to be a slider or connection to the health bar. So I'm going to hit Control S to save this, and I'm going to return to Unity to attach this script to our non-playable character. All right, here we are back in Unity. I'm going to select NPC here. I'm gonna grab this NPC damage script and drop it here. Now for player, we wanna grab our player and drop that in there. And then underneath canvas, we're gonna grab our slider and drop that in there. Now, later we're gonna go in and edit this so it looks more like it. Like you can see there's this handle slider. If I deactivate that, you can see it got rid of this bigger part. And then there's a fill area, which is kind of what we're really interested in, which is that center part. And so, um, we'll go into adjusting this later and we can almost create our own, but if I select this handle underneath handle slider area, like if I delete this, for example, 
you can see there's another one and underneath this fill area here, there's another uh, fill. So if I move this, you can see this is the thing behind it. So for now, let's just leave that as is just so we can see the code working. And um, let's see if we can keep going here. It looks like it kind of did not update when I come on. did that. So actually what I'm going to do is it looks like I messed it up a little bit. So in case you did too, I'm just going to right click again, UI, select slider. And that time it placed it in the middle. So I'll just scale that up a bunch and just sort of position this up here. It could be in the middle. And as we get into, we'll do more UI stuff later. Um, but for now, you know, um, we're just doing the basic stuff to so that we get comfortable with it without going too crazy. So again, dragging that slider into the health bar area. All right, let's save our scene and let's return to our uh, Visual Studio. All right, there's another area that, another Boolean variable I'd like to add. And we'll just leave it, we can actually get rid of this because it's automatically private without the word private. But we're just going to check if it has damage. Now, the reason for this is if if we have damage, we want to turn this on and off to prevent that like multiple damage is interesting in happening in one frame. That means like it comes close and we run. If it stays too long in the same position, it's going to keep sucking the energy out of our player a little bit too quickly. And so we're just really doing this. And you'll see later as we implement this. So it doesn't do this in the same frame because we're going to be using update for this. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see that code. I'm going to hit control S to save this. And let's start looking at our logic inside of update. So let's use some code from the previous tutorial. And what that is, is we're going to calculate the distance between the non-playable character and the player. Remember what I told you before? A lot of times, if you're a little confused about the code, there's going to be so much repetition that after a while, you'll start to see that, oh, there's a similar way of doing things and I'm starting to understand it. And I'm, I'm also in the de description, I'm going to be posting a lot of the detailed explanations of how this works. So don't feel um, as though that the me talking about it alone is all you have for uh, understanding how this works. You have online documentation as well as, I'll, I'll type out more detailed stuff on this. But here we have a float di variable here, and all it's doing is it's storing the distance between these two points. And that's the position of um, uh, this object, that the NPC, and as well as the player's position. All right, so let's do some, um, uh, um, some logic checking. I'm not going to use this necessarily, but um, I'll show you in a second. I'm not going to use the uh, what IntelliSense is suggesting as a comment. All right, so our in information is a little bit more exact. So we're going to check if the non-playable character is within the range to inflict damage. So distance here, as you remember, is the distance between these two. But how far of a distance do we want to go? Well, remember we created this variable called damage radius, which is set to two. Well, we're going to check if distance is less than or equal to our damage radius, and we've already had damage inflicted. So what happens is right now damage is set to false. So right now the exclamation point means not true. So if our distance is less than or equal to the radius and we have not inflicted damage yet, then we're going to set the health bar to that value minus damage amount. So that's what's going to move our, our health bar value. So here's um, damage amount, which we set here to 10. So we're going to take 10 off. And it's set to 100 increments. So you'll see that in a second. And then we set the damage. Set has damage to true to prevent multiple damage instances happening in one frame. Now, once this happens, I'm going to go ahead and save this, um, and we'll we'll do. It's this is a pretty good suggestion, but that's not what we're looking for right now. We're going to do multiple checking. So there's else ifs and all this other stuff. So let's jump on to the next section. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste in that code. So else if. So this is another way of saying else if, and then we can stack these our distance is less than or greater than damage radius that means this is giving us time so our damage radius is two so if we can get away and so this is going to take the you're gonna have to put your game designer hat on if our damage distance is two which means it's the uh, if we get out of that distance which is greater than two then we set this to false and then when it catches up it'll add more damage so this is sort of a nice way of, of throttling how much damage and it gives our character time to run away 
So I'm going to go ahead and save this and let's return to Unity and see how this works. All right, here we are back in Unity. Now, I'm going to select this slider and I'm going to expand it a little bit. And so you can see how this works. So I'm going to press play and let's go ahead and find our way to our character, which is there. That's our enemy character. And come on, let's see if we can get it to follow us. There we go. It's following us. And it looks like our slider is not moving. So let's make sure, here's our NPC. We have the slider. And I think I understand uh, part of the problem. So our slider is at zero. So we actually have to take our slider and move it all the way to one. And notice it's from zero to one, so it's in point increments. So let's go back to our non-playable character and let's set our damage uh, radius back to two and then our damage amount to 0 0.1 instead of 10. Because we'd have to change the value of our to 100 to, you know, 100%. So I didn't realize that right away. So now when I press play and I come within distance here, let's see if it chases after us. You can see we get, it's it went down 0 0.1 as it's going close to us. So we can set this to maybe damage amount to 0 0.01. And as we come close, and we might have to change a little bit of that damage distance. But, um, and again, as like I said, you're going to have to put your game designer hat on to fix this. But you can see now it's moving. I'm getting away. The closer I get, you know, it keeps sucking my energy. And you could also, like I said before, you can start to remove these, like the um, this handle here. Now you can see it looks a little bit more like a health bar. So if I press play here and I get closer, it's now taking my energy away. And you could also do something like this where let's actually take our slider and expand it up a little bit and move this down. And you could see that there's a slider here and it says normal color could be green. Let's move that to green. And then, uh, well, this is more for the button. Let's see background color could be red and let's make sure too that our slider is see if we can move that background or the fill area whatever make that a little longer something like this because it was accounting for that little handle notch and then that fill area could be green uh, kind of a classic video game look, but it is kind of conflicting with the um, the green ground. So, so now you have like your damage is showing through. So very Nintendo style um, uh, health bar here. So it looks pretty good. In the next video, we'll take a look at coding it so that that if your negative energy uh, um, bar goes down to zero you will have a um, maybe it'll say like uh, you lose try to stay away from negative people or something anyway uh, thanks thanks for watching this one in this lesson and then in the next one we'll go on to the next one